So in the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. That was Vice President Kamala Harris, who was a former prosecutor, a former sex crimes prosecutor as well in California. She was uh, an attorney general in California before becoming a senator in California and then before uh, becoming the vice president to President Joe Biden. She's now the presumptive Democratic nominee. She gave that speech at the uh, campaign headquarters to her staff, and she made it clear that one of the things she's going to do now as the presumptive Democratic uh, nominee for president, and uh, she will be the Democratic uh, nominee for president, is she's going to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. And she is not going to shy away from calling Donald Trump out as a sexual predator and as someone who was found liable for sexual abuse. I want you to watch what she said here. Play this clip. So in the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as Vice President, before I was elected as United States Senator, I was the elected Attorney General, as I've mentioned, of California, and before that I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And then in true prosecutor form in the speech that she gave earlier today in front of her campaign staff, she talked about the other types of crimes she prosecuted and the other types of fraudsters who she prosecuted. And she said, the way I went after them and won, I'm going to go after Donald Trump, who's a convicted felon. He's a criminal. He's someone found liable for sexual assault. He's someone who's opened up a scam college. Take a look at this. Watch her prosecute the case against Donald Trump. It's pretty great. Play it. So in the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as vice president, before I was elected as United States senator, I was the elected attorney general, as I've mentioned, of California. And before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. You know, and as I reflect on those clips that I shared with you, I think it's important that you see again who it is that she is prosecuting. And just think about the contrast that exists right now with the energy in the Harris campaign versus Donald Trump. Like Donald Trump is going around giving uh, campaign speeches where he's calling, for example, women horse faces. I mean, this is Donald Trump here. Play the clip. You know, uh, Marjorie is here. Just about and they found at least five million instances on tape, and the courts didn't want to even look at it. The district attorney of New York, under the auspices and direction of the Department of Injustice in Washington, D.C., was investigating me for 
something that is not a crime, not a misdemeanor, not an affair. I never liked horse face. I never liked it. Never, it's just not. It's terrible for me. That wouldn't be the one. There is no one. We have a great first lady. And speaking of the case against Donald Trump, that uh, Kamala Harris is prosecuting. When Donald Trump spoke in front of a group of young Republicans, like the group of uh, like Gen Z Republicans, what Donald Trump said in his speech was that the most, he was told that the most courageous thing he had ever did was describe when he was caught and exposed for bragging about sexually assaulting women, Donald Trump told the public that it was locker room talk. And so he said the most courageous thing he did, he said a military general told him that the most courageous thing, even more courageous than war, more courageous than actually sacrificing for the country, was when Donald Trump characterized sexually assaulting women as locker room talk. Listen to what Donald Trump said to young Republicans. Play the clip. But I went onto that stage just a few days later, and a general who's a fantastic general actually said to me, sir, I've been on the battlefield. Men have gone down on my left and on my right. I stood on hills where soldiers were killed. But I believe the bravest thing I've ever seen was the night you went onto that stage with Hillary Clinton after what happened. And then that woman asked you the first question about it. And I said, locker room talk. It's locker room talk. What the hell? What are you talking? Locker room talk. <laughs> that was not a great... And then, of course, you have, you know, what Donald Trump uh, actually said, and he was asked about this at a deposition. And again, think about this. You have Kamala Harris, now the presumptive Democratic nominee, prosecuting the case against this despicable human being. Watch what Trump said at his deposition. Play the clip. And you say, and again, this has become very famous in this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy? Well, that's what it's. If you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And of course, Donald Trump is also on audio recording bragging about owning beauty pageants for the purpose of, or one of the things he said he would use as the owner of the beauty pageants is that as pretext to uh, inspect naked girls without their consent, he says. And he says, because he owned the pageants, he could say he was inspecting them. Here, play the clip. Well, you could also say as the owner of the pageant, it's your obligation to do that. So so you have done that. Now, tell well, me I'll what tell you the funniest is that I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. And, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that like everything doctor, is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress. Is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like I mean, that's truly horrific stuff right there. And then you compare that to Vice President Kamala Harris and some of the other messages that she was talking about earlier today. Play the clip. Donald Trump wants to take our country backward to a time before many of our fellow Americans had full freedoms and rights. Mm -hmm. But we believe in a brighter future that makes room for all Americans. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. We believe in a future where no child has to grow up in poverty, where every person can buy a home, start a family, and build wealth. And where every person has access to paid family leave and affordable child care. That's the future we see. Together we fight to build a nation where every person has affordable health care. Where every worker is paid fairly. And where every senior can retire with dignity. 
All of this is to say building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. I just want to show you this mo this uh, moment as well because it really uh, it touched my heart. This is where um, President Biden said that he's always going to be there uh, with her during the campaign. Play this clip. The name has changed at the top of the ticket, but the mission hasn't changed at all. And by the way, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be out there in the campaign with her, with Kamala. I'm going to be working like hell, both as a sitting president, getting legislation passed, as well as in campaigning. You know, what we still need to save is democracy. And Trump, Trump is still a danger to the community. He's a danger to the nation. And uh, just, just ask my foreign policy colleagues, my counterparts, and other people around the world and at home. And then quite literally, he stayed on the speakerphone the entire time. And he was uh, rooting for her during the speech. Watch this incredible moment. Play this clip. Probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do everybody here. It's neutral. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. So we're at this moment now of hope, uh, energy, um, this incredible energy. And I think that Vice President Harris right now coming out with, I'm a prosecutor, he's a convicted felon. That theme over and over again is um, it's truly incredible. Tell me what you think. Hit subscribe, let's get to 3 million together. Thank you for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.